All right, in my last tutorial, I showed you guys how to make uh, movie clips. And we made this apple, we drew this apple, and then we copied and pasted all of the artwork onto layers and a movie clip. And a lot of great things can be done with movie clips in Flash. And one of the neat, neat things you can do with them is script to them. But there's another type of symbol that you can make besides a movie clip. You see, I've got this, this apple selected here. And if I hold down this, you can see there's movie clips, there's buttons, and there's graphics. And I'm going to be talking today about buttons. So we're going to, we're going to make buttons. Now, if you're going to make a website in Flash, you're going to want to be able to know how to make button. So let's do that. So I'm going to hit File, New. And I'm going to get a new Action Script 3 is fine. We're not going to do any scripting anyway. Um, we get a new blank document. I'm going to start off with a rectangle tool. And that way I can show you a few other things as we make our button. So I'm going to set some options here on this rectangle tool. I'm going to constrain the proportions here. So you can see I've got these constrained. And I'll put in some options here like 13 pixel curved radius here. And now when I, when I draw out this um, button, you can see that it has a uh, curved edges. I'm going to undo. I'm going to set some parameters here. Let's set a color. Um, and you can see here that it's showing up as alpha zero. So I'm going to need to switch that to 100 so it's not see-through, completely transparent. And then for a stroke color, maybe I'll take a, a darker green, right? So I've got dark green and a lighter green for the fill and a darker green for the stroke. And I'll just click and drag. And now I've got this uh, pill shaped. And what I can do now is, is I can click on the inside of it, double click to get the stroke and the fill, right? So I've got it highlighted and modify, convert to symbol. And there it is, symbol one. And what I'll do is I'll change it from a movie clip to a button. And I'll change the name here to BTN1. So BTN1 name and type is a button. And I can have the registration point for the button in the upper left-hand corner or in the middle if I'd like or on the right or wherever I want. I'll, upper left-hand corner is fine. And I'll show you that in a minute. So now when I, once I click OK, it's now a button. If I have it selected, right? If I have it selected, I'll see a blue box around it. Plus, up here in the properties window, it'll say button, right? There's a place for me to put an instance name for my button, which is handy, and we'll be talking about that also. But um, also, and then you can see here this blue box, and there's a registration point in the upper left-hand corner. You can see that, right? Now, I can't take my paint bucket anymore and just fill it with a new color. Watch if I try to change that to blue. I can't fill a symbol with a color. And to do, to do that, I have to go into editing mode and edit the symbol. So I have to either double click on this button or I have to go in my library and double click on the button in here. And I can then that way I can go into editing mode. The other thing I could do is I could right click on it probably. And I'm sure there's an edit, see, an edit window for it. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I double click on this button, so now that I've double clicked on my button, you'll see that right above the stage it says scene one, button one. That means I'm inside of button one and I'm editing the button. If I click back on scene one, I'm on scene one and I can't edit the button. I can just click and drag it around. But if I double click on it, I am now inside of the button in editing mode. And if I wanted to, at this point, watch this, I can change the color here, and since it's selected, it automatically changed colors. Control Z to undo. Okay, so I can paint the button right now. You can see it says shape. It no longer says button. When I click on this, I'm inside the button, so it sees this as a shape, right? And, um, and so there's the difference, you know, editing a symbol versus being in scene one and just dragging the symbol around. So right now I'm in it, symbol editing mode, and I can edit this button. All right. Next thing we want to talk about about this button is the up, over, and down states. So I'm going to double click on it and show you. Look at the timeline. The timeline is much different than the apple. The apple, right, was a, a symbol, but a movie clip, right? We have a timeline here going from one and just going up, right? And these are frames or keyframes that we can put in our movie. And when our movie plays, the timeline um, plays, and, 
and you will be experiencing that. But right now, if I double click on this movie clip, you'll see that inside the movie clip, I've got multiple layers and I've got a timeline. So every movie clip has its own timeline, right? Well, for a button, when you double click on a button, you get this special timeline that has an up, over, down, and hit state, which is almost like a special button timeline or button states, if you will. And I don't know you know, the exact names for it that like Flash uses, but basically this is how it works. On the over, I'm going to put a keyframe. I'll right click, insert a keyframe, and then I'm going to change the fill color to brown. Okay, not a great color, but hey, let's change that. Okay, light green. Light green, right? And then on the down state, I'm going to insert a keyframe, and I'll change it just so it's something different. I'll change it to yellow. Okay, so now if I scrub by holding this red piece at the top, you'll see up, over, and over looks the same, so I need to change that color. And I'll just get my paint bucket, and I'll change it to, it needs to be a much lighter color of green. All right, that's good. I selected it, and then I changed the fill color here, and that changed it. So up, over, down. Now, if you want to test out your movie, hit Control enter on your keyboard to publish a Flash movie, and you'll see as soon as my cursor rolls over the button, it highlights, right? That's up. And if I click down on the mouse, that's down, there's yellow, right? So up, over, down, right? And it activates as I'm over the button. Now, the last one, hit state. Hit state defines the boundaries that activates your button, right? So this is what we usually do for hit state. Let's say you have a button, but you want when anybody gets near the button at all, right? So in my movie, if I was to get even this close to the button, I want the button to work, right? I want it to work if they even get this close. I want it to activate. Well, what you could do is extend the hit state of the button, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to right-click here and insert a keyframe, and then I'm going to get a bright red box. I like to choose red because red is different than any other uh, color on the stage, and so I know that I'm using it basically as a hit state. And I'm just going to draw a big red box around the button, right? And so now my hit state is huge, right? So you see there's the button up, over, down, but then the hit state is big. Now the hit state will not show up in the final movie. It'll be invisible. So now I hit Control Enter on my keyboard. You'll see that I don't see the red, right? But as soon as I get close to the button, look what happens. I can click out here and it activates the button. So that is the hit state. The hit state changes the boundaries of the button. And that's really good also if you wanted to have, let's say, like an invisible button or something like that. Then what you could do is, for an invisible button, you could make these, these guys right here see-through, right, or transparent, and then you'd have the hit state and it would still work. Let's see if we can do that. So delete, delete, and how about even this, delete, right? Hit Control Enter, and you can see the button still shows up, right? See that? Even though I have no up, over, and down, I have a hit state, so the button is essentially still there. And I, what I could do is, is on my hit state, I could extend the boundaries of that, right? And now, extend the boundaries of my hit state, and now my whole stage is a button but it's kind of like a hidden button or an invisible button, something like that. And that's useful in movies or games or, you know, there's all kinds of applications for that. I'm going to hit Control Z on my keyboard to go backwards. And, and that's it.